On July 1, 2025, astronomers flagged 3I Atlas as the third confirmed interstellar visitor. But within months, it defied every expectation. With 14 unexplained anomalies, a mysterious anti-tale, and a course change that rewrote its story entirely. Quietly, nearly every major space agency shifted from lab tests to the largest planetary defense drill in history, all centered on this one object. If 3I Atlas is just a weird comet, why did the world's response escalate so far, so fast? And what do officials suspect that they aren't saying? The official story says nothing to see, but the actions behind the scenes reveal a global scramble that starts with hard data and leads somewhere nobody wants to admit. So what really began when the sky changed? The first confirmed sighting of 3I Atlas came just after midnight on July 1, 2025. The Atlas telescope in Chile picked up a faint, fast-moving object on its automated sky survey. Within days, astronomers around the world were tracking its path, running calculations, and comparing notes. The numbers did not fit any pattern familiar from the thousands of comets and asteroids catalogued in the solar system. The object was on a hyperbolic trajectory with an eccentricity of 6.14, far beyond the limit for anything bound by the sun's gravity. Its speed sealed the case for an interstellar origin. At discovery, 3I Atlas was traveling 221,000 kilometers per hour, about 137,000 miles per hour. As it approached the sun, that velocity would climb to a peak of 246,000 kilometers per hour, more than 150,000 miles per hour, faster than any spacecraft ever built by humans. The Atlas survey team, following international naming conventions, designated it as the third confirmed interstellar object, with three indicating third, I, standing for interstellar, and Atlas naming the instrument that found it. Only two other objects, one I Oumuamua in 2017 and two I Borisov in 2019, had ever received this label. Each had challenged astronomers in its own way, but three I Atlas immediately stood out for its size, activity, and the sheer volume of data it began to generate. Observations from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope on August 20, 2025, gave the first reliable estimate of its size. The nucleus was at least 440 meters across, and possibly as large as 5.6 kilometers, putting it somewhere between a city block and a small mountain. That made it several times larger than 1I Oumuamua, and at least as large as 2I Borisov. The object was visibly active, with a coma, a cloud of gas and dust, forming around the icy nucleus as it neared the sun. Multiple jets of material were detected streaming from the surface, hinting at complex internal processes and a volatile composition. The object's brightness peaked near perihelion, the point closest to the sun, on October 30, 2025. Its coma grew more pronounced, and astronomers noted rapid changes in both brightness and structure. The spin period was measured at just over 16 hours, with a light curve amplitude indicating a non-spherical, possibly elongated shape. Photometric and spectroscopic campaigns from ground-based telescopes and space observatories captured a flood of data, with teams in Hawaii, California, Egypt and Chile all contributing to a growing international dataset. By December, 3I Atlas was on track for its closest approach to Earth, about 270 million kilometers away, or 1.8 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. At that range, it posed no direct threat to the planet, but its interstellar trajectory and high velocity made it a rare and valuable target for scientific study. The object's passage through the inner solar system offered an unprecedented chance to observe material from beyond the Sun's sphere of influence, possibly even from another planetary system entirely. With every new observation, 3I Atlas drew more attention from astronomers, planetary defense planners, and space agencies. Its physical characteristics, icy nucleus, active jets, hyperbolic speed, were all measurable and verifiable. But as data poured in, small discrepancies began to surface. The numbers did not always add up. The object's behavior, while broadly comet-like, refused to fit neatly into established models. What began as a routine cataloging exercise soon became a global scientific event. The baseline facts were clear. 
3i Atlas was big, fast, and from beyond the solar system. Everything else, as it turned out, would be up for debate. Across four months, the data on 3i Atlas began to defy simple explanation. In mid-August, the Kotami Observatory in Egypt measured a dust-to-gas ratio of just 0.05, almost an order of magnitude lower than any comet observed in the last 20 years. That same week, Palomar's 200-inch telescope reported nickel vapor in the coma, but no detectable iron. That composition, effectively infinite nickel to iron, puzzled spectroscopists because even the most metal-rich solar system comets never show pure nickel signatures without iron. Nickel stood out in a way that made no easy sense. By late August, the Apache Point Observatory in New Mexico logged a coma composition dominated by carbon dioxide. Their readings showed a 7.6 to 1 ratio of carbon dioxide to water, the highest ever recorded. Most comets are water ice with a dash of carbon dioxide. 3i Atlas flipped that script. Meanwhile, a team at Gemini North in Hawaii caught the first images of a sunward anti-tail, an optical feature where dust appears to stream toward the sun, not away from it. This anti-tail persisted for weeks even as the main tail lengthened in the opposite direction, raising questions about the dynamics at play. On September 6, the European Southern Observatory's La Silla facility measured extreme negative polarization in the dust, with values plunging beyond known cometry ranges. Negative polarization is common in comets, but the degree seen here was unprecedented. Just days later, the SETI Institute's Allen Array detected erratic non-gravitational acceleration. The object's velocity fluctuated in ways that standard outgassing models could not fully account for, even after factoring in the jets mapped by Hubble and the James Webb Space Telescope. In mid-September, the Kiso Observatory in Japan reported multiple jets erupting from opposite sides of the nucleus, sometimes simultaneously and sometimes in rapid sequence. The pattern suggested either a highly active rotating core or a more complex internal structure. On September the 22nd, the Lowell Observatory in Arizona tracked a sudden brightening event, with magnitude jumping by nearly half a point in under six hours. No corresponding outburst or fragmentation was visible, leaving the cause unclear. October's approach to perihelion brought more surprises. On October 2nd, the Max Planck Institute team in Chile recorded a shift in the object's spin period, dropping from 16.2 hours to 15.8 hours over just 12 days. Such rapid spin changes are rare and usually linked to violent outgassing or fragmentation, but neither was conclusively observed. On October 15th, the Lick Observatory in California documented a cluster of smaller bodies moving in tight formation with the main nucleus, possibly fragments and possibly a swarm. Their trajectories were so closely aligned that the team described them as coherent within the resolution limit. As perihelion neared on October 30th, the anti-tail brightened dramatically. The SOHO spacecraft's coronagraphs captured jets firing almost directly sunward, while ground-based teams in Spain and South Africa measured a spike in carbon dioxide emission. The nucleus temperature inferred from the infrared spectrum rose to levels that should have vaporized most surface ices, yet the object remained intact. Perihelion brought results that did not match simple expectations. Early November saw the return of non-gravitational acceleration, this time with a measurable lateral component. The minor planet center's published orbit solutions began to diverge, with residuals growing larger by the week. On November 9th, the Keck Observatory in Hawaii detected a brief outflow of ionized nickel, a feature never before confirmed in an interstellar object. By late November, the Anomaly Ensemble had grown to 14 distinct features – ultra-low dust, pure nickel vapor, extreme carbon dioxide dominance, persistent anti-tail, unprecedented negative polarization, erratic acceleration, multi-jet activity, sudden brightening, rapid spin changes, possible swarm geometry, perihelion anti-tail flare, high nucleus temperature, lateral acceleration, and ionized nickel outflow. Each had been logged, timestamped, and debated in a patchwork of preprints, circulars, and internal memos. No single explanation fit the full set. 
The puzzle was no longer about one odd comet, but about a pattern of behavior that resisted every standard model. For the global research community, the question became not just what 3i Atlas was, but how so many anomalies could stack up in a single fleeting visitor from the stars. October 30th, 2025 brought a turning point. As 3i Atlas swept behind the sun at perihelion, orbital tracking teams logged a subtle but unmistakable change in its trajectory. The object outbound path no longer matched predictions based on solar gravity and standard outgassing. Instead of continuing along a clean hyperbolic arc, the new solution pointed the object toward the outskirts of Jupiter's hill sphere, a vast region where the planet's gravity can trap passing bodies. The numbers suggested a maneuver that would let 3i Atlas linger in the solar system rather than racing straight out into interstellar space. The sudden shift reignited debate among astronomers. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb published a preprint within days proposing a model that could tie together several of the object's oddities. According to Loeb, the persistent anti-tail, normally a trick of perspective, might actually be a cloud of compact bodies traveling in formation, not just dust or gas. If 3i Atlas was a swarm rather than a single nucleus, its collective motion could explain the anti-tail brightness and orientation. More importantly, Loeb's model made a clear, testable prediction. The swarm members, being less massive, should lag behind the main body by tens of thousands of kilometers, especially after perihelion. This lag would be visible as a faint sunward extension in high-resolution images, distinct from the main tail. Not everyone agreed. Dr. Karen Meech, a leading comet researcher at the University of Hawaii, counted that outgassing alone, especially from multiple jets, could produce complex shifting dust features and non-gravitational accelerations. Meech pointed to previous comets with wild jets and anti-tails, arguing that the data fit within the known range of cometry behavior, even if the details were extreme. She called for more precise imaging and multi-wavelength observations before embracing any exotic explanation. Throughout November and early December, telescopes from Mauna Kea to La Silla hunted for the predicted lag geometry. On December 3rd, a team at the European Southern Observatory announced they had imaged a faint sunward structure extending nearly 40,000 kilometers ahead of the nucleus, consistent with Loeb's swarm prediction. Other teams reported similar features, though some cautioned that solar wind effects or dust grain dynamics could mimic the same geometry. Those caveats kept full confirmation out of reach. The debate sharpened the stakes for planetary defense planners. If 3i Atlas was a swarm, every element of detection and interception would have to be rethought. For now, the object's behavior remained just testable enough to keep both camps searching for the next clue. A single object hurtling through the solar system is one thing. A suspected swarm moving at interstellar speed and showing unpredictable behavior is something else entirely. As the anomaly list around 3i Atlas grew, the usual methods for tracking and characterizing near-Earth objects began to look inadequate. Radar returns from Goldstone and Arecibo flickered with inconsistencies. Optical telescopes struggled to resolve the faint sunward structures predicted by the swarm hypothesis. Software built to track solitary comets kept flagging outliers and possible fragments, forcing analysts to rewrite detection protocols on the fly pressure mounted on international planetary defense networks. On November 25th, the International Asteroid Warning Network issued a rare global alert. All member agencies were to synchronize observations and submit real-time tracking data for a new extended exercise window. The official drill period opened on November 27th and would run through January 27, 2026. Publicly, this was the eighth IAWN coordinated exercise since 2017. Unofficially, the scale and urgency surpassed anything attempted before. Within hours, the European Space Agency activated its full planetary defense triad, mission control, rapid response modeling, and ground-based observation teams working around the clock for three days. Internal documents later revealed a multi-billion euro budget surge approved in under two weeks to expand sensor coverage and data integration. The U.S. Space Force, 
originally scheduled to run its next orbital tracking rehearsal in late 2026, quietly advanced the timeline, deploying new high-altitude assets and issuing a fast-track procurement notice for next-generation tracking platforms. Japan's space agency initiated a National Asteroid Impact Coordination Drill, bringing together military, civilian, and commercial satellite operators for the first time under a unified scenario. Even countries with limited space programs, Australia, South Korea, and Brazil, joined the exercise, each focusing on high-velocity, non-gravitationally accelerated objects. A new clause appeared in the IAWN drill documentation. For the duration of the exercise, classified sensor data could be temporarily integrated into the global feed, but only for objects on non-standard hyperbolic trajectories. The move raised eyebrows among transparency advocates, but officials argued that the complexity of the 3i Atlas case demanded every available tool. For two months, planetary defense shifted from tabletop scenario to real-time distributed rehearsal, testing not just hardware, but the willingness of agencies to cooperate when faced with something that refused to fit the old playbook. Stories about hidden technology and secret visitors have always found a foothold when science runs into unexplained territory. The law around Roswell, government cover-ups, and high-ranking whistleblowers has shaped how people respond to any cosmic mystery, even when the evidence is thin or absent. In the case of 3i Atlas, these cultural currents bubble up again. Some see patterns in the data and wonder if this is another chapter in a much older story. Rumors circulate, fueled by decades of speculation about recovered craft or classified encounters, but none of it amounts to proof. The scientific method demands solid, repeatable evidence, not just patterns or echoes from the past. For now, the only certainty is that 3i Atlas is raising questions that science can't yet answer. Until the data speaks for itself, every extraordinary claim remains just that, a claim, not a conclusion. The next wave of observations will matter more than any rumor or legend. December 19, 2025 stands as the defining checkpoint for 3i Atlas. On this date, the object makes its closest approach to Earth, about 270 million kilometers away. Around the world, telescopes are scheduled for continuous observation, from high-altitude observatories in Chile and Hawaii to orbital platforms like Hubble and JWST. Networks of amateur astronomers have coordinated campaigns to capture every possible detail. The data collected will go far beyond simple imaging. Teams are preparing to analyze the object's spectrum, dust composition, jet activity, and any changes in its trajectory with unprecedented precision. For months, speculation and debate have filled the gaps left by incomplete information. Now, the focus shifts to what the evidence will actually show. Researchers and the public alike are calling for full transparency, raw data, real-time releases, and open peer review. December 19th is not just another waypoint, it is the moment when conjecture gives way to measurable reality. The world will be watching, and the numbers will have to speak for themselves. Right now, space agencies worldwide are rewriting the rules of planetary defense, whether by necessity or design. The line between scientific preparedness and military expansion blurs with every new anomaly. As technology accelerates, so does the risk of decisions made in secrecy. The sky no longer waits for consensus. Are we ready for what follows when uncertainty becomes policy? Let me know what you think in the comments below.